You're now watching Way Back Wednesday. Sponsored by Floors Glass and Mirror Company. Servicing the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. And good evening. Welcome to another episode of Way Back Wednesday. I'm your host, Randy Adcock. So good of you to join us tonight. Uh, if you are watching, uh, today is Wednesday, May 26th. If you're watching today on this date, it is live. Uh, any other time, you may catch us on reruns. Um, if it's not Wednesday, May 26th, you're watching a rerun. So there you go. Um, you know, we've got a lot to cover tonight. And as is often the case, the, tonight's show is going to overlap some from last week. Um, and I've got some pictures to show you of some, some topics from last week. And so I'll get to that in just a minute. Before I do, I just want to take a few minutes uh, I've done, I'm going to do something tonight I've not done before. I'm going to dedicate tonight's show to my father. Uh, as many of you know, my father passed away back in February. Uh, he and I both uh, contracted COVID at the same time, and unfortunately, he didn't survive it. Um, but he loved this show, and he loved hearing and uh, the people call into the show and sharing their memories. Uh, he loved the pictures. He loved everything about what we were trying to do here, um, not only uh, walking down memory lane, but trying to preserve history. And so uh, he used to get on me, uh, make sure I had my shirt buttoned up, so pop the, the button uh, is buttoned like you would like for it to be. Um, but anyway, um, rest in peace, Pop, and this show's for you. Uh, some thanks to issue out tonight, as usual. Uh, you know, this show, I've said many times, uh, is at, at least a, a large part of it, in fact, um, it comes about because of your contributions, you, the viewer. Um, not a week goes by that I don't see or hear from some of you, and I really appreciate uh, your input and your, and your passing on your knowledge and your wisdom and, and certainly pictures. Uh, I get a, a good amount of pictures throughout the year from viewers, um, souvenirs and, and different things. So I thank you for all of that. Um, certainly uh, Eric Dawson, um, uh, Randy Harrell sent me some pictures this week. Um, Gene Herring is just an absolute. Uh, if you don't know Gene or never met Gene, you can go out to the good old boys flea mall. Well now it's called Tall River Flea Mall out on 301. And Gene has a booth out there, um, excuse me, and he dabbles with uh, some old currency, old money, coins, bills, and so forth. Uh, but he's just a font of knowledge, and he loves his stuff, too. And uh, he's got a, a Facebook account, and, of course, uh, he's always got some neat stories and pictures. And uh, so some of what I'm going to share with you tonight is, comes from um, Gene Herring's Facebook page. But um, as I said, this, this show is in large part um, uh, put on by you, the viewer. I'm here as a figurehead more than anything else, uh, but it's you, the viewer, that make the show fun for me, and so thank you for that. Um, without further ado, uh, I mentioned that tonight's show is going to be overlapping a little bit. Um, uh, we had some discussion last week about, if you remember, Spiro Canuclis, and Mr. Canuclis uh, ran a restaurant down on uh, Tarver Street, the New York Cafe. Uh, he was also very instrumental and, and influential, in fact, in local high school athletics. Uh, I understand he fed several teams on occasion uh, for special events and so forth. I think he funded a lot of events. He purchased uniforms and supplies as the teams needed them. Um, just an outstanding community-oriented gentleman. And um, the story is that the bust, and some of you remember this, there was a bust of him uh, on the, in the trophy case at Rocky Mount Senior High School. Uh, it was there when I was there. I left in 1977, of course. I understand it was there up through 1980, and sometime after that it got gone. Um, we don't know where it went. Uh, we're not accusing anybody of anything, certainly. Uh, we'd like to think that somebody has you know, stuck it somewhere for safekeeping, uh, but there's an active and ongoing effort to try to locate Mr. Canuclus's bust and, uh, and put it back on display somewhere. Today, um, Randy Harrell sent me a couple of pictures I'll share with you in just a minute. But he also shared with me a, a, a possible hint, or clue, if you want to call it a clue, that um, Mr. Canuclus was responsible for an athletic scholarship at Wesleyan College. So there's a possibility that when the Rocky Mount Senior High School over on Tillery Street ceased to be a high school and, and the school moved over to Bethlehem Road, um, it's a possibility that um, that bust of Spiro Canuclus ended up at Wesleyan College. Now, just today, I was given this information, so I've not had a chance to run down that lead, but I certainly will and, and see if there's anything to it. There may be that someone has, you know, got it on display in a, in a 
coach's locker, I mean a coach's office or something out there. So I'll, I'll do some digging and see what I can find out with that. But let's go ahead and lead you to the first picture, if you would. This first picture is actually taken out of 1952 Rocky Mount Senior High High Knocker. And um, again, thanks to Randy Harrell for digging this picture up. And um, I'm not sure who these other gentlemen are, but the gentleman on the right in the t-shirt there is Mr. Sparrow Canuclus. And again, this is from the 1952 Rocky Mount Senior High High Knocker. And um, so I've got one more lead. Let's go to the next picture. This was also from the High Knocker, and it appeared in, I think, a couple of different um, yearbooks. Uh, the same picture, I think, was in like 1948 yearbook and also again in 1957. Uh, but there you see, uh, and you've noticed the spelling of his name. It's S-P-E-R-O. I mentioned last week that I've seen it in print in some, uh, some areas where it's spelled S-P-I-R-O, but I've seen it more spelled this way. So I think this is the proper way to spell his name. And um, so anyway, that was a gentleman, uh, big stogie hanging out of his mouth there. And uh, wherever he was at, it was obviously cold. It's a, like a thick wool coat there he's got on and sitting on some bleachers somewhere, probably watching a football game. But anyway, that was Mr. Canuclus. And again, if you have any clues or ideas about what happened to the bust or where it may be located now, we're still in, in hunt and trying to find it. And uh, so I hope someone can share some light on that. By the way, um, if you got anything to share with us tonight, the number is 407-1111. Again, 407-1111. Uh, we'd love to take your calls. Okay, uh, this next picture, and by the way, the rest of these are kind of a combination of things I've acquired from various places, so there's no particular uh, rhyme or reason or no particular theme to the rest of these pictures until we get down toward the end of the night, and I'll explain that to you when we get to that point. So go ahead, Lee, let's go to the next picture. Uh, this was a really neat picture I come across today, and I found this on Facebook, by the way. I'm not sure what this outline is supposed to represent. It almost looks like uh, an outline of the state of North Carolina, particularly the, the western, uh, the left-hand side resembles the western part of the state. The right-hand side kind of, sort of, maybe looks like it could be the coastal area. So, but superimposed over this kind of map of North Carolina is Benvenue School. And so um, you'll notice across this, of course, Benvenue Road there um, in the upper part of your screen, and across Benvenue Road, is, you see nothing but fields there now. And of course, um, behind Benvenue School, where it was, is now the, uh, excuse me, the Walmart, uh, Walmart, oh, yeah, the Walmart Shopping Center. And so um, I tried to zoom in on this at my office, and it gets a little fuzzy when you try to zoom in on it. Uh, but it's just a neat old picture. This is the only aerial picture I remember seeing of, of Bimenu. And um, it was referred to in this picture as Bimenu High School. And I'm not quite sure, maybe someone who went there or got a little more knowledge than myself can shed a little light on this because I, my mother went to Bimenu, um, but she graduated from Rocky Mount Senior High School. So I think she went to either elementary school, perhaps up through middle school uh, at Bimenu, and then transferred over to Rocky Mount Senior High School, and that's where she graduated in 1958. So I'm not sure whether there was two schools or whether it was one school that went from lower grades all the way up through high school. So maybe someone who knows can, can shed some light on that for us. Again, 407-1111 is the number. Um, we're looking at Benvenue High School, is at least according to the picture there, the captain of the picture. Um, this next picture, Lee, go ahead and bring that up. This is a gentleman, his name was Mr. Hugh Thorpe. And I guess he was a custodian, perhaps, at Benvenue School. And this picture was from 1958. And that, again, it was captioned as being Mr. Hugh Thorpe, Benvenue High School, 1958. So certainly a lot of people uh, refer to it in some of these older pictures as Benvenue High School. Um, but I'm still not certain that it was more than just the high school. So, okay, in past shows we have talked about um, some businesses up and down Church Street and the, the many businesses that thrived at one point there and were when that was a bustling area, particularly North Church, well, all the way up and down Church Street for that matter, both North and South, uh, particularly before uh, Interstate 95 came into being and, and that was just a, a really busy section of Rocky Mount. Um, a lot of motels, hotels, gas stations, restaurants, and certainly one of the more popular ones was Miss George's Carolina Cafe. And so, if you would, Lee, let's go to the next picture. And this next picture is actually Miss George herself. 
and I'm not sure exactly when this picture was taken. Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say probably sometime in the 1960s. Um, I, I, I cannot say I remember her looking like this. Uh, when I first met Miss George, it was many years later, and um, she was a, a much more seasoned uh, proprietor of that business. But anyway, this is Miss Lucille George that ran uh, Carolina Cafe, and I'm not sure what's in the right hand, but that left hand like it could be holding a slice of peanut butter pie. And anybody who knows anything about Carolina Cafe knows that Miss George's peanut butter pie, um, if not world famous, certainly is famous in Eastern North Carolina. It was good stuff. Uh, I heard recently, too, that there's a restaurant opening up somewhere in downtown Rocky Mount, and they're going to be serving. Apparently, some of Miss George's descendants uh, have got the recipe, and there's going to be some uh, servings of that pie. So I look forward to that myself, and whenever it opens up, I hope to, to be one of the first customers in the door. Okay, Lee, let's go to the next picture if we could. And this next one is actually um, it was Marita Bakery uh, bestowed some fairly prestigious honor on Miss uh, George um, for, golly, I, I'm not sure it says in this picture, 45th anniversary. Okay, uh, I'm seeing the, the bottom caption now. It says Marita Bakery honors Carolina Cafe on its 45th anniversary. Lucille George opened Carolina Cafe in 1942 and has always used Marita bread from the first day she opened. So this was, they acknowledged her long um, service with Marita Bakery, her long standing uh, business relationship with, with Marita Bakery, and also the fact that she was in business 45 years at this time. Um, that, uh, let's see, I, I don't, I can't make out the gentleman's name. It looked like Milton Long, general sales manager, and then um, Ned Baumbuck, who was a plant manager. Um, I'm not sure when this picture was taken. Um, I'm guessing somewhere in the 1970s, maybe. But anyway, okay, let's go to the next picture, Lee. And if you remember from a previous show, we talked about this was the original, well, let me back up. This was, this was not the original location, but this was certainly in later years a location for Fridge and Tire Company. And when they moved to this location on Church Street, uh, 1939 or 40, somewhere along in there, you'll notice it was a two-story building, of course. And in the next picture I'll show you, there was a building or a section added onto the building uh, that became Miss George's Carolina Cafe. But this was the building. That building, by the way, is still standing. It's still down on, on uh, North Church Street. Um, it's a little ways down from Wholesale Paints on the opposite side of the road. But anyway, this was Fridge and Tire Center built this building. There you go. There's a, there on the right-hand side you can see. And you, judging by these cars, I'm guessing this is early 1950s, 52, 53 maybe. So by this time, the restaurant had been open for a few years. Uh, Fridge and Tire had certainly been open for a few years. But you can tell from this picture that the Carolina Cafe restaurant was added on to the original building that was Fridge and Tire Company. And so this is a good picture uh, that shows the relationship between the two businesses. And, and they both thrived here for many, many years at this location. Okay, Lee, um, let's go to the next one then. And this next picture, I believe, is the, there you go. I'd seen this ad before, and I think I saw it in a, either a, um, a high school yearbook or maybe even in one of the city directories. But anyway, it doesn't have a date on it, uh, but it says, Welcome Farmer Friends. Eat in good taste at the Carolina Cafe. Uh, they advertise in regular dinners, short orders, sandwiches, where friends meet to eat. Open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, grade A restaurant, co a good cold beer, uh, Carolina Cafe. So kind of had all bases covered. Very long operating hours. I'm not sure how many days a week they were open, um, but I would guess at least five and perhaps six. But that was a long day from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So, okay. All right, Lee, let's go to the next one. And this next picture is also a picture of Miss George and her brother, uh, Joe Rabel. And this is, uh, um, I apologize, a little bit grainy picture. This actually appeared in the Rocky Mount Telegram. Uh, I'm not sure what date this picture was made, um, but it says Lucille George left and her brother, Joe Rabel Wright, are familiar faces to the regulars at Carolina Cafe. Miss George has operated the restaurant since 1942 and her brother Rabel went to work there in 1947. So, um, again, good brother-sister operation there. 
with a lot of success, uh, Carolina Cafe. Okay, let's go to the next one, Lee. And this next picture is actually, um, for those that remember Eden there, these were tabletop jukeboxes and they were tied to a main jukebox so you could sit at your table and make a selection and it would play on the main jukebox. Um, I'm not sure who owns this one, but I have one identical to this that was graciously given to me um, some time ago, last year in fact, and it's got the same sticker on the front, Carolina Cafe, 1940 to 1987. Um, and you'll notice that too. It's interesting that all the literature says Miss George opened that restaurant in either 1941 and or 1942. I've seen both uh, years used as the opening date, or at least the, the date that Miss George opened it. But here it says 1940 to 1987. Uh, that's what it says on mine too. Oh, we've got a call. Let's get this call. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Yes, sir. Uh, I was calling to let that first picture show Spiro in. Yes, sir. Those three gentlemen with him, I think. The first the one on the left is uh, Coach Cleetwood. And I think the one in the middle was Coach Knock Atkins. And the one on the far right was uh, C.B. Lundy. Okay. Uh, now, did you go to Rocky Mount Senior High? Yes. Did you, did you remember or did you know uh, Mr. Sparrow Canuclus? Uh, yes. Did you? Okay. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, what year did you graduate from senior high? I graduated in uh, 53. 53, okay. Yes. I'm, a, I'm an old man. <laughs> well, hey, that's a blessing. That's an absolute blessing. It beats the alternative. Um, so let me ask you, I've, I've seen a little bit of literature about Mr. Canuclis, uh and his contributions and so forth, um, but I don't have a real good picture of, of how long he was affiliated with sports in this area. Uh, certainly from 1948, I, there's a, uh, in one of the high knockers, he's listed in there, I got a picture in there, up through 57. Um, but does that drive with your memory that from the mid to late 40s through the early 50s? Yeah, yeah in the early 50s and maybe the early, I mean the late 50s and maybe the early 60s. Well, that's entirely possible. Like I said, I, 1957, uh, was that uh, other picture we showed earlier, and um, so I'm not sure that he was not there beyond that. Um, as I rec I was thinking I'd read he died in 1959, though. I could be mistaken about that. Well, you might be right. Uh, maybe someone who remembers can tell us, but I, I seem to recall reading that somewhere, and, and again, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm not positive about that. But, yeah. okay, so Coach Atkins, and what was your other coach's name? Uh, Cleetwood was the one on the left. One in the middle looks like Naka Atkins, and the one on the right is Coach Lundy. Lundy, okay. All right. Thank you for sharing that with us. I appreciate it. Uh -huh. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Okay. i tell you what, Lee, this is a good time to take our first commercial break. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that, and when we come back, we'll look at some more pictures, and we'll share some more memories with you, and we'll take some more phone calls. So don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back with more Way Back Wednesday. Service in the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. I'm Daniel Moss, owner of Cornerstone Funeral Home, and I'd like to invite you and your family to give our family an opportunity to serve you in your time of need. And we offer a full line of funeral services, everything from visitations to graveside services to cremations on site with a live crematory, as well as a banquet hall to meet the catering needs of our families that we serve. We offer catering service, we offer refreshments prior to visitations and services of our family, and we want to invite you to come and experience the difference here at Cornerstone Funeral Home. Hello, I'm Gus Tellis, here with exciting news on the Affordable Health Care Act special enrollment period. The enrollment period runs from February 15th through May the 15th. If you want to enroll now in the Affordable Care Act, call me today. There are no service fees and all plans include preventable care options. Avoid costly bills. Let me help you find the best plan during this special enrollment period. Call me today, 937-6913. Hello? 
Yes, sir, I sure can help you. When faced with special care needs for elderly or disabled loved ones, families want compassionate, comforting care. That's Tender Touch Home Care Services' goal, providing the level of care we would expect for our own. With over 10 years of home care excellence, Tender Touch provides an array of services that keeps your loved one at home. From personal care, light housekeeping, errands, and meal preparation, to our private duty care program, which combines all of our home care offerings in one package. Tender Touch Home Care Services, where your needs are our concern. We're in our 18th year of practice at the Hammer Chiropractic Center, and we've seen over 15,000 different people in the Rocky Mount area. 40% of headaches actually come from a neck problem. Many patients come in taking multiple aspirin, over-the-counter medications and such a day, and we can get you to stop doing that and actually fix the problem so the headaches don't arise anymore. A lot of people think chiropractic hurts, it does not. Most of the people come in and they feel great when they leave. You're now watching Way Back Wednesday. Sponsored by Flores Glass and Mirror Company. Servicing the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. And we're back. We're back. Folks, for just tuning in, you're watching Way Back Wednesday. I'm your host, Randy Adcox. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Uh, good to have you with us. Uh, during the break, I got a call from a gentleman who was telling me about uh, there's a restaurant up in Franklin, Virginia that just so happens is owned by Mrs. George's brother. Um, in addition to her brother, we've got a call. Let's get this call first, and I'll tell you about this call in a minute. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I got you. How you doing? All right. Well, the information that I was told by Tracy Thompson at the library just a few weeks ago about Spiroconucleus' life. Mm -hmm. He died in the calendar year of 1959, according to the Rocky Mount Telegram, and he was thought nobody had any information about his date of birth. He was probably born in Greece, and, and when he got to this country, they did not have an accurate understanding of when he was born date-wise, but he was thought to be about 67 years old when he died in 1960. 1959, not 60, but 1959. Gotcha, that, okay. That's what was stuck in my ear by Tracy Thompson at the library. Okay, I thought I remember seeing on one of the papers you brought me that was 1959, his day of death. All right. All right, All right buddy, thank you. All right, bye-bye. Um, yeah, before the call, I had, was saying, uh, we had a call during the break um, who was telling me that um, Miss George has a brother named Fred. In addition to the one Joe that worked with in the restaurant here, she's got a brother, Fred, who runs a restaurant up in Franklin, Virginia, um, called Fred's Restaurant. And apparently very similar food to Miss George's. Got another call. Let's get this call here. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Hello, caller. Uh, just to let you know that Bimby New High School was uh, last year there was 60, 66 and uh, 67 and they went to Northern Nash. Okay. So was it multiple grades, and, and if so, when did the grades start, you know? You might want to turn your TV down a minute. I think you're getting some feedback from your TV there. <laughs> okay. Do you know when, Bim or what grades Bimini New School started? Caller? Oh, I think we lost him. Okay. That's all right. Um, in any case, um, 66 to 67 apparently was the last class that graduated from Bimini um, High School. So 
I'm not sure exactly um, what grade started out over there. I, I don't recall it being elementary school, but it perhaps was. I'm just not sure. But anyway, uh, Fred's Restaurant in Franklin, Virginia, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's on Highway 58 in Virginia, not the 58 in North Carolina, because there's one in Virginia also that runs uh, east-west over toward the Tidewater region, over toward Norfolk and Suffolk, that area over there. And uh, so I believe, I, I've been up that way several years ago, it's been a while now, but I think Franklin is somewhere off of 58 going again to that Tidewater region. But um, Fred Rabel runs a restaurant called Fred's Restaurant, and apparently it was very similar in, in menu and so forth to what Miss George has had here. And he made, I went to his Facebook page, in fact, a few minutes ago, and uh, he says his family's been in the restaurant business since 1945. So that kind of jives with you know what we're seeing about Miss George's and, and her run at Carolina Cafe here in Rocky Mount. So uh, I, I feel fairly safe in saying it is to her brother, and he does indeed apparently still run the restaurant. Uh, it looks like it's still open for business. Uh, got a, a website and um, some pictures inside the restaurant. So okay, alrighty then. So let's get back into the. Um, the pictures, Lee, if we could. Oh, before we do that, I, since we're back on the topic, I, I just uncovered something I had brought with me, and I wanted to share this with you because Gene Herring, as I mentioned at the top of the show, does such a great job of storytelling. Uh, not, not only does he go out here and research, he takes pictures, and he gets permission to go inside buildings and so forth. He does a lot of neat things. Um, but anyway, he put this little synopsis um, on Facebook along with those pictures I shared earlier. And it says, uh, it's difficult to believe that almost 32 years ago, Miss Lucille George locked the front door to Carolina Cafe for the last time. An entire generation has grown up in Rocky Mount without experience in Carolina Cafe. The restaurant opened in 1941 and shared the building with Pridgen Tire Company at 906 North Church Street. Lucille and Taft George purchased the cafe in 1942. So apparently they were not the original owners. I'm guessing maybe someone in the Pridgen family opened it up originally. Um, but anyway, it says uh, they purchased it in 1942. Uh, located on Highway 301, the main north-south artery on the east coast provided steady traffic and the restaurant thrived. Taft George died in 1949. Miss George, with the help of her brother Joe, the cafe continued to grow and prosper. In 1961, a renovation added more seating capacity. By this time, Carolina Cafe had become a landmark for travelers and locals. Miss Lucille George's signature dessert, peanut butter pie, was her claim to fame. She vowed to never reveal the recipe for that tasty delight. In 1987, Miss George made the decision to retire, and on Wednesday, December the 23rd, 1987, the last meals were served. It was a sad day for the many diners that actually ate there, the end of an era. Miss Lucille Rabel George died on April the 11th, 2008, and she kept her promise and carried her recipe for peanut butter pie to her grave. So again, Gene Herring does a, does a wonderful job of going out here and researching these old businesses and old buildings and, and putting together a nice story to, to go and mesh with those pictures. So uh, I don't know that he watches the show, but um, I want to give him credit for, for what he does. And, and I, I borrow a lot from Gene, and I, I want to make sure I acknowledge his contributions to this show. So thank you, Gene. Okay, so Lee, let's see. Let's jump back in. This next picture is actually an advertisement. And it caught my, this was something else I pulled off Facebook today, by the way. Um, and I'm not sure that, um, oh, I know, this was, this was not Gene Herring. Uh, Charles Dunn put this up. I'm not sure where he found this. I'm guessing either in a city directory or perhaps even uh, in an old Rocky Mount Senior High uh, yearbook. But this was dated May the 25th, 1951, and of course Hank Williams, the one and only Hank Williams, your cheating heart and so forth, uh, played at the Planters Warehouse Number no. 2 uh, on May 25th, 1951. Shows at 4 o'clock and 8.30 were followed by the world's biggest square dance at 10 o'clock. The event was sponsored by the Exchange Club of Rocky Mount. So anyway, um, this was well before my time, I'm sure some of you may remember when Hank Williams came to Rocky Mount. Um, but anyway, it looked like it was a big time had by all, uh, and certainly lots of folks who enjoyed that, those shows, I'm sure. So, okay. All right, Lee, let's go then to the next picture. Uh, we got a call. Let's get this call first. Hello, caller. You're on the air. All right. That story you were just speaking about, about Hank Williams. 
Yeah. I looked into something about that and asked some questions about it. And when Hank Williams was supposed to perform there on that day, it was supposed to be an afternoon performance at 4 o'clock. And then the same day after supper, it was supposed to be another performance in that tobacco warehouse. Mm -hmm. He was inebriated. And couldn't perform. Information came to me <laughs> from uh, the man that used to run the uh, barbershop over there, Calvin Creech. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't talk to him myself, but somebody that used to work with him told, told me that that event never did happen because when he fell off the stage, it all got canceled. Yeah. He was in town, but the performance did not happen. Uh, you know what, I remember, I remember you telling me this story, uh, and I'd forgotten until you just mentioned it again, but yep, I... And, well, and, and, the, and the person named Calvin Creech that run the barbershop over there on Falls Road next to the hot dog stand was there. He had bought a ticket to be a patron at that event, and he saw the event happen with his own eyes. <laughs> yeah, I knew Calvin Creech. He used to cut my hair. Good guy. Sure did. Creech. Yep, Calvin Creech. Very sharp individual. He was a certified lecturer in the Masonic organization. And if he was to tell you something, you could almost be sure that you could carry it to the bank. Well, uh, you know what? I have. If he said that, then I have no, no reason to doubt it. You're exactly right. I, that's exactly right. All right. All right, buddy. Thanks again here. Appreciate you. All right. Yeah, we actually discussed this on a previous show here some months back, and I'd forgotten about that. So this ad apparently appeared, and then for obvious reasons, it, the show never went on. But um, anyway, sad, sad times. All right, so Lee, let's go to the next picture then. And this next picture is one that I did not remember ever seeing before. It's an aerial shot of Abbott Laboratories. And I'm not exactly sure of a date. There was no date on the caption of this picture. Um, I'm going to guess sometime in the early 1970s, perhaps. Um, in the very, very bottom left-hand corner of this picture uh, is what I believe to be the, the roadside of Highway 301. Um, but like I said, it's, it, there's a lot of grass there uh, out in front of the building. And so, of course, a lot of it's parking lot now. But in any case, this was Abbott's. Uh, and again, I, I don't have a definitive date on this. When I tried to zoom in, it got a little fuzzy and kind of blurry, so I couldn't tell for sure, but it looks to me to be perhaps sometime in the mid, early to mid-70s maybe. Could be older than that, but that's what I'm guessing. So, okay, Lee, let's go to the next picture then. And this next one is one that I think I've seen before, but it's a neat old picture, um, and it was encaptioned um, Rocky Mount, uh, Main Street, um, tobacco and railroad. And as you can see, the, the trucks are lined up bringing tobacco to market. Um, over on the right-hand side, you see the trains lined up on the track there. If you look down on your left-hand side, down the street down, it's looking south on Main Street, and you can see the bell tower for the old uh, uh, firehouse and all down there on the left-hand side. So this picture is probably from the 1940s, I'm guessing. Um, but it's a neat old picture, and you can see uh, a lot of Rocky Mountain history in this picture. And again, I'm not sure who took it. Could have been Charlie Killebrew. Um, but this picture appeared on, on Facebook on one of the listings there. I just, I'd seen it before, but I thought it was neat. I wish we would share it again. So, okay. All right, Lee. We've got a call. Let's get this call here. Hello, caller. You're on the air. All right. I've never seen that picture ever before. Okay. It's, but it's clearly right there where that little small railroad yard was that the Atlantic Coastline Railroad had, mm -hmm. right there in that little triangle where the tobacco platform is. Right. That, that tall building right there in the center of the picture, mm -hmm. up there where, uh, where Quinn Furniture or whatever it was, but uh, down there in that area, the Atlantic Coastline Railroad, that would have been the first uh, stop when the trains left the main train station and went north to Richmond. The first stop would have been a stop whistle stop called Backer, mm -hmm. B-A-C-C-A, -C -C -A. and then where that tobacco platform was back in the 30s and the 40s, the railroad had a lot of business moving tobacco in those years, and they actually, the railroad had a small 
yard down there, kind of around that tobacco platform. Mm -hmm. That's a very good picture right there. Yeah. Depicting what the railroad's presence was moving and messing with tobacco in the 30s and the 40s. They were certainly tightly intertwined, weren't they? Sir? They were certainly tightly intertwined, weren't they? That's, that's right. It, <laughs> this would have been before my time, or I would have been a little bitty boy. <laughs> Yeah, certainly before my time, too, by many years. <laughs> Way before your time. Yes, sir, absolutely. Okay, buddy, thank you, Harry. All right. All right, we'll see you. i tell you what, Lee, let's, uh, I think this is a good time to take our next commercial break. Um, and when we come back, we've got um, uh, a handful of kind of oddball pictures to show you, and then we're going to get into a group picture uh, that's, I don't know, eight or ten pictures in one category. So. If you need to take a little bathroom break or a little uh, snacky poo break, this is a good time to go do that. And don't go away too long. We'll be right back with more Way Back Wednesday. See you on the other side. Wednesday, sponsored by Floors, Glass, and Mirror Company. Service in the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. Hello, I'm Gus Tellis, here with exciting news on the Affordable Health Care Act special enrollment period. The enrollment period runs from February 15th through May the 15th. If you want to enroll now in the Affordable Care Act, call me today. There are no service fees and all plans include preventable care options. Avoid costly bills. Let me help you find the best plan during this special enrollment period. Call me today, 937-6913. Hello? Yes, sir, I sure can help you. I'm Daniel Moss, owner of Cornerstone Funeral Home, and I'd like to invite you and your family to give our family an opportunity to serve you in your time of need. And we offer a full line of funeral services, everything from visitations to graveside services to cremations on site with a live crematory, as well as a banquet hall to meet the catering needs of our families that we serve. We offer catering service, we offer refreshments prior to visitations and services of our family, and we want to invite you to come and experience the difference here at Cornerstone Funeral Home. and meal preparation to our private duty care program which combines all of our home care offerings in one package. Tender Touch Home Care Services, where your needs are our concern. We're in our 18th year of practice at the Hammer Chiropractic Center and we've seen over 15,000 different people in the Rocky Mount area. 40% of headaches actually come from a neck problem. Many patients come in taking multiple aspirin, over-the-counter medications and such a day and we can get you to stop doing that and actually fix the problem so the headaches don't arise anymore. A lot of people think chiropractic hurts. It does not. Most of the people come in and they feel great when they leave. You're now watching Way Back Wednesday. Sponsored by Flores Glass and Mirror Company. Service in the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work. And we're back. Folks, if you're just tuning in, you're watching Way Back Wednesday. I'm Randy Adcox. Good of you to join us tonight. During the break, um, I actually got a couple messages here that I, I just realized I had. So 
Um, I want to share a couple of things with you. Randy Harrell sent me another picture uh, that I had not seen, a neat picture of Spiro Canuclis, uh in the kitchen of his own restaurant. So uh, I don't have any way to get that into the show tonight, um, but I will certainly get this into next week's show and share this with you. It's a neat picture too. Um, and he also asked me to put out this message he has a small collection of Christmas cards from the Dale Holderness family. He says, I would like to return these to a confirmed family member if any happen to be viewers of the program. They date from the mid-50s to the mid-60s. So if any of you happen to be a member of the Dale Holderness family, uh, and he sent me a, a kind of a snapshot of one of them. They're really neat. It's got a, uh, looks like a, a map of the Eastern United States, and then there's family members um, who are uh, apparently away at college um, all up and down the East Coast. One is in the Wharton School of Finance in Pennsylvania. Another's in a Union Theological Seminar in Richmond, uh, Seminary, excuse me, in Richmond. Uh, one is at Salem College. And one is at uh, McCallie School in Tennessee. So it's a neat Christmas card. It says, Merry Christmas from the Dale Holderness family. And uh, Randy says he's got a collection of these that, that date back to the 1950s and 1960s. So if you or anyone you know happens to be a member of the Dale Holderness family and would like to get um, your hands on these pictures, or these, um, this collection of Christmas cards, uh, let me know and I'll get word out to Randy and he'll get them to you. Randy's actually out in, in Tennessee, uh, but he's coming back to North Carolina, I understand, in a, in a, in a few weeks now. He and I are going to try to get together for lunch. We originally had a date set back in March and I ended up in the hospital and that went kaput. So we didn't ever get together then, but we're going to try it again next month. But anyway, uh, the Dale Holderness family, um, Randy's got some, some Christmas cards he'd like to get back to you. Okay, so Lee, let's jump back into the pictures then, if you would. And this next one, there's only two in this category, but this first one is actually a Meadowbrook dairy truck. Um, I love this old figure. Here you go. And I'm not sure who this gentleman is standing in the door with a truck there, uh, but this looks to be from, I don't know, probably early 1950s, I'm just guessing. Um, based on the type of truck it is, um, but it says drink Meadowbrook milk, uh, grade A, homogenized, pasteurized, and it's got the phone number on the side of the truck too. Now this next picture, go ahead Lee and bring that next one up. This next picture is a, it's actually signed by Leslie L. Proctor. Um, and I'm not sure, I, I know some Proctors and that name rings a bell to me. Um, I don't know if any of you know Mr. Gary Proctor, uh, uh, fine guitar player from Rocky Mount, and for some reason I seem to recall his father might have been named Leslie or someone else in his family, but anyway, again, this is um, from the Meadowbrook Dairy. Uh, I don't know what year, but just looking at the truck, I would say probably 50s, uh, perhaps early 60s, but um, anyway, another uh, bygone era. We certainly don't have any more milk delivery trucks uh, and deliveries, uh, deliverers anymore, unfortunately. Uh, it's hard to beat a ice cold glass of milk you just picked up off your front doorstep at uh, 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. But anyway, okay, we've got a call. Let's get this caller here. Hello, caller. You're on the air. All right. Uh, the Meadowbrook Dairy has uh, been gone a long time. I live on Meadowbrook Road, and uh, there's a man that still lives down there, I think, that uh, he, he work, was working at Meadowbrook Dairy when they stopped operations, and I think I remember him telling me that Meadowbrook Dairy stopped operations and thus bottling, packaging milk in 1964. Okay. So it just does go back away. It sure does. All right. All right, buddy. Thank you. Okay. All right, then. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and lead you to the next picture. And this next one is actually, uh, it's a single picture, and this is a place that brings back a lot of memories for a lot of people. Uh, the Pizza Inn, this is down there on the right-hand side of Country Club Drive, just before you get to that um, uh, Martin Luther King, uh, I'm sorry, Buck Leonard um, ramp that goes out towards 64. But in any case, um, I, I remember going to Pizza Inn uh, as a teenager, and. Uh, for a long time, it was considered the best pizza in Rocky Mount, and on Friday and Saturday nights, you would do good to get a park uh, in this parking lot. Now, folks just park all up and down. You see the sign on the left over there that says Highway 64 up there, and I can very well remember having cars parked on both sides of that road as far as you could see. 
a busy place. All right, we've got a caller here. Hello, caller, you're on the air. All right. I hate to be bothering you. No, one. you're not bothering me. Okay, anyway, when the pizza in out there in that location, it had issues with it becoming a flooded property. But when it opened, I think, in the year of 1964, it was an instant success. And on Friday and Saturday nights, they, they were the first place around here that had hand-tossed crust, mm -hmm. crust for pizza being fresh made. They had draft beer, and the crowd in there was so thick you know, on Fridays and Saturday nights that the fire department kept a person near the front door and wouldn't let the crowd get was so big inside the building. The crowd in there was so so large that you could walk on the people's heads inside the <laughs> building. And it, it was popular. It limited the number of people in those years of being able to go in there so the fire, it would violate the fire code. Yeah, and by the time I was old enough to get in there, uh, it has started, its popularity has started to wane somewhat. It was still a busy, busy place. Right. Uh, Friday, Saturday years, night, it was packed. Buy beer at the age of 18. Right, yep. It was in the early 1960s when I would have just come out of high school. Mm hmm It was a big, it was a big success. It was run by Lee Bozeman and his wife, and uh, her name was Lib, and the business partner that was there with them was Corinne and Odell Searcy. Mm-hmm. They were the people that run that place, and it was a big business for a number of years. It sure was. It sure was. A lot of fond memories of Pizza Inn from a lot of people in Rocky Mount from a fairly large segment of society. I mean, like I said, it was the mid to late 70s before I started going in there. Well. Uh, but it was still really, really popular even then. That's right. Okay, buddy. All right. Thanks again. All right. All right. Okay, then. So let's go ahead, Lee. Speaking of popular eating establishments, this next picture is one that I'm sure a lot of you remember too, and um, I certainly have some fond memories of eating there. Uh, Buck Owens Barbecue, um, over on Sunset Avenue, <coughs> excuse me, across from the, well, it used to be across from the Inglewood 66 station, and now there's a car wash there on that corner, which is, this was across the road from that, of course. Um, but in any case, uh, Buck Overton's and Bob Melton's and Josh Bullock's um, uh, were probably three of the more popular barbecue restaurants in, in North Carolina for sure, uh, certainly in eastern North Carolina and around this area here. Uh, but I have some very fond memories of, of eating here, uh, as well as at Bob Melton's for that matter. Um, my family didn't ever go over to Josh Bullock, so I really can't compare, uh, but I've eaten many good meals at both Buck Overton's and Bob Melton's, and uh, this picture is one of them I, I had to smile when I saw it, brought back a lot of good memories. So. Okay, Lee, um, this next group of pictures, uh, I mentioned at the top of the show that I was dedicating the night show to my father, and um, he loved this show. He loved the history and the things that we shared, and, and he loved learning and hearing about the memories that the viewers would call in and share with us. And um, so we had talked many times about Hardee's and the history of Hardee's and Rocky Mount. Um, my dad worked for Hardee's uh, for a number of years, and uh, he worked over at the facility over on Church Street, uh, the corporate office over there. Uh, he worked in the, uh, a couple different areas. Uh, he worked in there back there in the warehouse for a while and, and worked um, in the area where they made uh, hamburger patties and so forth. But um, anyway, I, I ran across these pictures today on Facebook. Uh, it's a really good picture tutorial, uh, tutorial of Hardy's. And there's a, this was kind of like a, a a blueprint or a drawing or whatever of how the restaurant would look. And you can go ahead and lead to the next picture. And by the way, this was 1961 when they started construction. Um, well, let me back up a minute. This picture is dated 1961. It says, Hardy's number one nearing completion in spring of 1961. So I'm not saying they started in late 60 or early 61, but certainly by the spring of 61, they were pretty close to getting this building finished. And if you notice behind it, there's a old tobacco warehouse back there behind it. And, um, and again, these pictures are a little grainy. They come from the telegram, so they were um, probably better in the telegram than they are being reproduced. But in any case, let's go ahead and lead to the next one. And this next one is actually, I believe, the grand opening. Um, and it just says, when the, Hardys, when the first Hardys and Rocky Mountain opened in 1961, it had windows on three sides so guests could see their hamburgers and cheeseburgers or french fries being cooked. 
And so in later years, this, of course, um, this building got gone, and a lot of folks don't remember this building, but I certainly do. I, I eat there a few times. Uh, let's go ahead and lead to the next one. This next picture is actually, I think, the one I was thinking about. Uh, as you can see, the shape of the building has changed a little bit here. Go back, Lee, one that the previous picture just for a second. Uh, look at this picture here, and particularly the roof. You see the roof line is slanted. Uh, those uh, what I call the, the H figures, uh, the braces and supports there in the front of the building that come from the roof line, uh, I mean from the ceiling down to the ground there. And now if I leave, go back to the picture we just at, and you see it's a little bit different there. Um, so they changed the, the front of the, the building. Okay, let's get this call here. Hello, caller, you're on the air. All right, I'll stick one more thing in your ear. Okay. Where that first part is picture was, where you can get a good look at the roof profile mm -hmm. of the tobacco warehouse behind that, that heart is number one. That was, uh, that's right behind that heart is restaurant is where the, where the railroad track left the main railroad tracks there out of the tobacco platform and went down right behind that uh, Hardy's restaurant and it went on over to the Imperial Tobacco Company's property mm -hmm. and on down through the southern of Rocky Mount and all out towards Rocky Mount Mills. Right. And the earlier picture that you just showed was the way the building was when Hardy's first opened. Mm -hmm. you, you couldn't go inside. When you went up there to order, you were at a wonder. Right. You were not inside of any kind of enclosure. You were outside. There was a shelter over you, and that's the way the building was when it was first built. Mm hmm That's right. Let me go back one more time to that previous picture, and let's let the viewers again get a shot. There you go. Like, like Eric is saying, there's no right now, inside sitting facility. There's, there's no entry into in any kind of an enclosure. You walk right up to a pass wonder, and right there you can see the roof profile in the back. I think that tobacco warehouse was one of the, the planters' warehouse that had an address over on Church Street. Mm -hmm. and right over there off to the right-hand side is, uh, I can't make out what that building was, but up there where Bullock's Furniture Store had their, their lamp sale and furniture sale, that was the uh, Mangum Number no. 1 warehouse, which went into operation in 1922. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, buddy. All right. All right. Okay, Lee, let's go ahead. We've only got a few minutes left, so let's go ahead and blow through these next pictures. Um, again, these are just a collection of pictures that uh, brought back a lot of fond memories to me. This was the grand opening. As Leonard Rawls was there um, at the grand opening service, and uh, the prices were 10-cent hamburgers, 15-cent cheeseburgers, 10-cent Cokes, 10-cent uh, for milk. I mean, <laughs> really, really cheap by today's standards. Okay, Lee, let's go to the next one then. And this was uh, a little better shot on the menu board. It's hard to see, but over on the right-hand side, that's Leonard Rawls. Um, the caption says, Leonard Rawls um, surveys Hardy's number one kitchen in 1961. So Leonard Rawls was actually going around, going through the kitchen and just taking a look at how the operation was going on back there. Uh, and again, this is 1961. Uh, as Eric said, prior to there being... Um, inside seating in the restaurant. So, okay. All right, Lee, let's go to the next one then. I'm trying to get through the rest of these before we run out of time here. And this, of course, was in 1990. This is when the restaurant finally closed. You see it's all boarded up. It was really about to fall in anyway. And uh, so December the 18th, 1990, uh, that Hardy's closed up forever and went out of business. And, and, of course, later years was torn down. And then let's go ahead, Lee. Let's get these next two or three in if we can. Um, many of you remember the Hardy's corporate office over on Church Street, um, one of the pride of Rocky Mount, now occupied, by the way, by the North Carolina Department of Motor Vehicles. I rode by a couple of days ago, and they, are, they set up operation in, in, in there now. So, okay, Lee, and sadly, the next picture here uh, is from 1999, Hurricane Floyd came through. This is an aerial shot of Church Street, and you can see uh, just how bad Floyd wreaked havoc on the Hardy's. Um, the entire campus of Hardy's there. Every building in that in that campus was flooded, uh, some as much as five or six feet deep. And um, so just just terrible, terrible destruction there from Hurricane Floyd uh, in 1999. Okay, Lee, let's go ahead. Then we've got two more. Um, this next picture here, there you go. Hardy's Food System founded here in 1961 by Jim Gardner and Leonard Rawls, now a major fast food chain. 
And the final one, Lee, I think, uh, the Veteran Memorial, this is Jack Lockley Park, uh, which is there behind where the original Hardee's was. Um, and the last picture, Lee, is just a better shot. There you go. And that's the, the park as it, as it is today. Okay, Lee, bring it back to me. Folks, that's going to do it for us tonight. We've run slam out of time. I want to thank you all so much for uh, being with us tonight. Thank you for your calls and for your input. Uh, it's always my pleasure to be a part of this show, and I thank you so much for allowing me into your home and share this information with you. Have a great week. Take care of yourselves, folks, and be kind to each other. We'll see you next week with more Way Back Wednesday. Good night. You're now watching Way Back Wednesday, sponsored by Floors, Glass, and Mirror Company. Service in the area since 1977 with residential and commercial work.